As regular viewers know, I spent this past week aboard the USS Harry S. Truman, operating off the coast of Florida, and then working on post-producing the episode that documents what we saw out there. Now that that episode is live, I wanted to do a quick episode on the volatile situation in the Middle East I was focusing on before I went to sea. To review, the current series of strikes and retaliatory strikes between Israel and Iran started with Israel's strike on the consulate building next to the Iranian embassy in Damascus, Syria, which took place on April 1st. That strike was effective in that it took out seven senior leaders of the Iranian Republican Guard Corps, but it also escalated the current regional conflict that began on October 7th when Hamas terrorists attacked a music festival and neighborhoods around southern Israel. In spite of the fact that Israel claimed the Damascus strike was a valid military target, Iran viewed it as a direct attack on sovereign territory and as a result conducted a retaliatory strike on Israel on April 13th using a total of 300 drones and ballistic missiles launched from both Iran and Yemen. With the help of the U.S., U.K., and France, Israel's robust defense systems held up, with only a small percentage of Iranian weapons reaching their targets, resulting in limited damage and no casualties. In spite of that fact and the Biden administration's input that Israel should consider the outcome as a win, the Netanyahu government swore that they would in turn retaliate, something we discussed on the channel in a live stream I conducted last Sunday while I was in transit to Norfolk to head out to the aircraft carrier. Two days ago, April 19th, Israel conducted that retaliatory strike on Iran. The Israelis have provided no details about the mission, but Iranian military officials have said that the IDF used both tactical aircraft and attack drones to hit a military airbase near the city of Isfahan. Those officials also claimed, based on the fact their radar systems had detected no unauthorized aircraft flying into Iranian airspace, that the drones had been launched from within Iran. The type of Israeli Air Force strike aircraft used is unknown, although it was most likely F-35s due to their stealth characteristics. Iranian military officials also claimed that their air defenses had shot down a group of Israeli drones around Tabriz, which is about 500 miles north of Isfahan. Photo analysis on X by Aurora Intel suggests that one of the Israeli targets was an S-300 missile system located at the 8th Shikari Air Base. Imagery shows the system's detection radar, NATO codename Flaplid, was destroyed. But damage from the strike was otherwise limited, perhaps by Israeli design. While Iran's April 13th strike on Israel was unprecedented, Israel has previously conducted drone strikes on Iran. As reported by the New York Times, in June of 2021, a quadcopter exploded outside Tehran at one of Iran's main manufacturing centers for centrifuges, which purify uranium and are used at the country's two major uranium enrichment facilities. Iran claimed that there had been no damage, but satellite images showed evidence of significant damage. Then in February of 2022, six quadcopters exploded at Kermanshah, Iran's main manufacturing and storage plant for military drones. In May of 2022, a strike targeted the highly sensitive Parchin military site outside Tehran, where Iran develops missile, nuclear, and drone technology. Quadcopter drones exploded into a building, killing an engineer and injuring another person. And in January of 2023, a drone attack on an Iranian military facility caused a large explosion in the center of Isfahan, the city near the airbase that was struck on Friday. The White House hasn't commented about the Israeli strike in Iran. At her daily press briefing yesterday, Corinne Jean-Pierre said, quote, I'm not going to speak or speculate about any of the reports that are out there, end quote. Meanwhile, initial reaction in both Israel and Iran has been muted, perhaps a signal that both countries are willing to de-escalate tensions, which the U.S. and allied partners certainly would welcome at this point, considering what could happen if they chose the alternate path. More on this situation as the information becomes available, so if you're not already a subscriber, become one so you don't miss anything going forward. And in the meantime, I look forward to talking to you again very soon.